Welcome to the Writer's Hour, where we have creative conversations with up-and-coming authors on their latest books. This is the place to be if you wish to get a preview of new books that are available for the voracious bibliophile, as well as the story behind the story for the voyeur who wishes a peek behind the creative curtain. Here's your host, Janine Bolin. This is Janine Bullen with the Writer's Hour Creative Conversations, and today's guest is none other than Tom Perone. And I always enjoy bringing Tom on because he has this amazing New England consulting group of Guilford that he is a part of, of which he was the founder of. He also is a massive business and personal planning sort of dude. What does that mean? It means that he is able to help you with your personal finances as well as your business. And the book that we are going to be talking about today is your business's DNA. That is what we're going to be working on and talking about. He'll talk to us more, but he's up in Connecticut. And so thanks so much for being on the show today with us, Tom. Totally my pleasure. And thank you for inviting me, Janine. It's always a lot of fun. So you're a multi-dimensional human being like most of us. You have uh, lived a life of lots of different aspects. So when somebody says to you, hey, dude, what's your specialty? What's kind of the, the thing that you say? Well, basically, nowadays and throughout my career, it's really been working with small business owners where I can take the chaos out of their life by helping them finish their financial plans and keeping it monitored. Because business owners, as you know, are notorious for always saying, I don't have the money and I don't have the time, but they have both and they know it, but they put it off and kick the can down the road because they're always involved working in their business, but not necessarily on it. So I help them work on it. And so this is a phrase that we've heard for decades upon decades, which is learn to work on your business, not in your business. So would you mind, I mean, people are used to hearing me uh, talk about my definition of that, but I'd love to have your perspective on what does it mean, Tom, help us out. Yes. Uh, uh, first of all, it means that you get your fingers away from the machines, number one, and you get your brain and you get out of your business office and you go and sit and have coffee alone. And you think about four areas of your business. The growth part of your business. What are you doing to grow your business? What's happening? How are you growing it? How are you getting it analyzed? The protection part of your business, what happens if I get sued? What happens if I die? What happens if I get sick? The equity part, what am I doing with the money that I'm making? Where is it going? Am I putting too much money in my business so when I want to sell, I can't get it out? Or if I my business fails, I've lost all this money. Um, and the last one is the transition. And whether you are 30 years away from retiring uh, or not, I always tell people when you buy a business, think in terms of your exit strategy because you could be in an accident tonight and what's going to happen to your business tomorrow? You put a lot of time in. Now, I don't want to be cavalier and say you think of those four things and in 10 minutes you come up. No, you need coaches and people to help you uh, uh, give you a pathway to all of those four sections. And my team is, is specialized in all those areas. Uh, and I'm like the quarterback. And I always tell the business owners, give me two hours a month. That's all I want, two lunch breaks. And I'm so organized and systemized that in six to 10 months, you'll have everything fine-tuned and we'll just fine-tune it every year. That's all. And you say it so simply, and you're like, oh, that's all. It's easy. It's simple. But that's only because you practice what you preach. And then you've written this amazing, amazing little book. Uh, it's not really so little. I just, I say that, but it's like, it's unlocking your business DNA. And so it's based on your own personal situations, the tragedies that you've seen happen with others. And so if you don't mind, talk to us a little bit about that book. Yeah. Uh, it came to me uh, last July. Uh, one of my friends called me and said, hey, 
why don't you write a book? Because they knew my life. And I said, I never thought of it. I, I wrote many white papers on different items about business. And I like writing uh, and writing about those things. And I started to think about it. And I said, you know, I've been in practice 50 years and I'd like to leave this knowledge that I have to people because I, I've grown a lot of businesses. They've been very successful. My own life has been very successful by using these same strategies. And, you know, I, I live an ideal business and personal life. And I, and I said, well, I, I should teach people to use some of these things and, and it'll help them in life and they'll have better family relationships and all that stuff. And then when I started getting into it, I realized, geez, I had a lot of stuff. I never thought I really knew this much, but I did. So each chapter was really about a part of growing your business and protecting it and transitioning it, you know, in, in order. But the funny thing was what brought me uh, more clarity than ever before is when I started to write this book, I realized, why do I have such a pinch, uh, a passion for this? And it, it went back to 1970, Janine, when I had entered the insurance business in, uh, uh, in late 1970. And in May of 1971, my father at 51 died of a heart attack, but he owned a very successful business at that time. And within three years, that business was liquidated for pennies on the dollar. Now, when he died, I didn't know enough how to help my family, but I saw what happened to my family and the destruction. Now, I'm Italian, and every Italian mother has plastic on their couch, and it might be 30 years old, but that plastic. Well, my mother loved to have the kids in the neighborhood come in and eat, and here's what I saw, Janine, through my eyes. I saw this uh, woman who raised five kids in middle class, lost her husband at, at 49 years of age. He was 51 and her life changed. She had to sell her house and do consecutive rents throughout her life. She lived in 97, but the joy that she had the most joy was raising the kids and, and having all the kids in the neighborhood in her house so she could feed them. That was lost. And that was a shame. And as I reached deep into that emotion, I realized, you know, this is not about money. This is about family, about quality of life, and a lot more than just the money. So as I read it, I started to read it, I really got more passionate about really giving people a lot of information because it makes a difference. I know it did when I read it, when I was reading through it. And uh, you and I have actually had conversations on the side regarding the book and how we live our lives and how you and I are both very successful in our lives. But it was because it was scripted. Uh, a lot of people don't know that, look, in order to have these successful lives, you really need to know what it is that you want. And so one of the neat things I liked about your book was the fact that you actually have systems in place for us to tweeze out and decipher how we want our life to live. So or how we want to lead our life. And so for writers that are writing their first novel or they're writing their very first book, what are some tips that you can give them? Because this is the first time you, like you said, I wrote a lot of white papers, but I was actually sitting down and writing a book. So I presume I'm making an assumption here that there were a few rewrites as you were like, okay, I need to tell more story. I need to tell more story about this. Thank God for my wife who, who uh, did all my proofreading and she was in publishing and she's very bright, much smarter than I am. And, but yeah, uh, it, you know, it was the first time I wrote something this long and I found that I had to find the passion because it's so easy to give up too soon. So if I were to give anybody who's writing or wants to write their first book or whatever, Find something that you're very passionate about because that'll keep you in the ball game. If you don't have the passion, it's not going to last. And put a target date on it, but be, be generous to yourself. Give it a year, give it a six months, whatever it is, but stay within that world because you could always change it. And then what I would do is I would structure a great outline, take your time on the outline, get clarity. And as you write each chapter, 
you you're allowed to change the future of that book because you'll get you'll grow with a lot more information that you even thought you would even have so you have to allow yourself to grow in the book as you write so the hardest thing is getting a first paragraph on the paper and then the third thing i would say or last one i'd say is go into a corner throw your phone somewhere in another room get rid of all the digital stuff other than your computer and just focus on what you're doing and get away from technology. That's it. Yeah, get away from technology. That is a challenging one. We, when I work with the nonprofit organization called NaNoWriMo, National Novel Writing Month, uh, frequently we have authors or people who don't even see themselves as authors or those kind of writers is how they perceive themselves. The very first thing we say is, look, this is what professional authors do and first time authors, which is shut down all the notifications that you have on your computer, get rid of your calendar pull up only your word processing aspect, turn off the spell check, turn off the, it's like, literally, you just want to, as we say, very uh, unceremoniously, you just want to throw up on the page. <laughs> literally, you just want to throw data, data dump, I think is the more appropriate, more politically correct word. So when you were doing your data dumping, you actually had somewhat of an outline beside you. Is that how you wrote? Yeah, well, it, it, it depends on the chapter because I need help. When I, when I was doing a chapter, I'd say, oh, this is a good idea. And and what happened was, what was very interesting, as you know, in this book, um, I, I first the book was supposed to be about strategies and concepts and things that I've used to help the business owner and the professional help the business owner. But then I reached back and realized this pension, this passion I have really is coming from my family's tragedy. And I said, I have to integrate this somehow because this is what's allowing me to write this book, to help other business owners to avoid what happened to my, my family. So what I did was, and Bill Doerr, uh, Sell More Marketing, who you know, Janine, gave me the idea. He says, Tom, why don't you integrate this, the story at the end of every chapter? And that's when I came up with the dream. And here's what it was. It was my dad died at 51. I was only seven months into my career. I knew nothing. I was totally, I had no, no, I couldn't help the estate. I didn't, but I saw the aftermath as I, so I said, what, what would have happened if my father didn't die? And as he was growing his business, which was already successful, and I was growing my practice, Every chapter was, Dad, I, it was like a conversation I had with my dad that month. You got to do this uh, to grow your business. So it was like an ongoing uh, story between the dream, which was my father, who was now living in the dream. And I, I got him all the way to 85 with my mother going to Cape Cor uh, Coral, Florida to retire. And, you know, um, and of course, that didn't happen in real life, but that was my dream. But he was my character at the end of the chapter. And it was really nothing more than saying to Mr. Businessman, hey, I just taught you about this element that works. Now you have to you have to uh, put action to it. So the action was the discussion I had with my father. So he was my character. And it was really a lot of fun. But reaching down emotionally, I got to tell you, I, I had some emotional uh, feelings as I was doing it. Yeah, it was good, though. Yeah, 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 we have a we have a little badge that you can earn on the National Novel Writers Month, and uh, that badge is it's just a little tear or it's a tissue, and it's because you move you move yourself with your own writing to a point that you actually have an emotional uh, outbreak or release, and you know if you make yourself cry while you're writing, that's that's good stuff. You know that's what people <laughs> that's what authors say. So I'm glad that you did because then that lets you know uh, you're going to be very authentic to your reader. Your reader's going to pick up on that. That emotion is going to pick up on the authenticity of that emotion. And even though it is a, a character, it's important. So many authors talk about the self-development that's required as you're writing your novel or your nonfiction book, just based on your life experiences that you've gone through. So well, you're talking, uh, go ahead. Yeah, no, no, this last thing, I have to tell you a, a very true story. When I finished that book. The moment I put my last typing in, 
And I looked at it, and it was just before the last proofread, but I knew I had finished it. Um, it right there, it was such an emotional, I, I mean, I pretty much, maybe I teared, I don't know, but I wrote Bill Doerr at this long letter about how I felt right at that moment. And he responded, but I, I saw all that emotion. I did not expect that, Janine. So if you, my, my um, experience is, I, I'm glad I wrote this book. Uh, will I write another one? I don't know. Uh, but there are many dimensions why I'm glad that this book was written. Yes, not only for you as a person and as an author, but also for the numbers of people that you'll be able to assist, uh, you know, long after you're gone, you're still, this, the thing that I love about your book is that it doesn't matter at what stage of life you're in. And it also doesn't matter at what stage your business is in. It is totally applicable, whether you're making dime one or not. And for many authors, and this is why I brought Tom on for, for the listeners who may be like, why does she have this guy on? It's not that he's just an, uh, he's an author and has a book. It's also because many authors have no idea how to run the business of being an author. And uh, Tom will definitely help you move along that process because as many people will tell you, you don't make a bucket load of money off the actual books. It, we're lucky if we get anywhere from 25 uh, cents to $1.25 per book as authors. However, where we make our money is in our speaking abilities, in our ability to teach people what we know, uh, to be able to have readers that will subscribe to our $15 a month, you know, subscription plans, you know, whatever it is we're building. But the book is basically the voice that gets people interested in what we have to offer. And then we build our business uh, on the back of that. So that's that's why I brought Tom on in case uh, I could hear people kind of going, hmm, why, why is this guy on? This is why. <laughs> well, so uh, any, go ahead. No, uh, no I was just going to say, uh, uh, when I do my podcast, uh, my guests will send an email out to some of their business owners saying, here's a, 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 a gift from me that Tom made available. I get a lot of emails and a, a, a lot of response from those people, uh, how much they like the book. I don't make any money because all the profits go to wounded warriors and I'm fine with that. It was, I didn't write the book for that reason, but my, I'm seeing now since July, the byproduct of people reading the book or even picking up and reading a couple chapters because you could start anywhere in the book and you'll get something out of it. And that's true. So tell us a little bit about wounded warriors and you picked this organization to receive whatever profits you make from the book. So tell us a little bit about that. Well, you know, years ago, I read a book. First of all, my father was in the Pacific and uh, my father-in-law, um, he was uh, on Omaha beach. And as I looked and read about world war II. I just pictured all these young 17 year old people not not bitching about anything, just doing what they had to do to, to get the job done and not complaining. And I, I think of all the young people that really have sacrificed for this country. And I just said, you know what, if I can make them a couple of bucks, uh, you know, I don't make any money on the book. I actually give a lot more money out of my pocket just to say, I, I feel good about doing it. But I feel there's people in this country that have sacrificed themselves to to represent our country and protect us. And I feel very strong about that. I'm, I'm very pro, uh, pro military in the sense of what they're doing for us. So it was just one of these things I just, if I could help them a little bit, that's where I'm gonna go. And I only bring that up because there are many authors who realize they aren't going to get multi, a multi-million dollar contract or anything like that based on their writing. And so this allows uh, them to bring to the forefront organizations, nonprofit organizations that they really care about, uh, give, give them a low exposure. So that's just an idea for some of you who are writing your book. And it's something that you can slip, like Tom did, slip into the back to say, thank you very much. I appreciate you buying this book and proceeds are going X, Y, Z. So that's just a, another idea idea. Are there any other ideas that were suggested to you, Tom, or that you implemented on ways to go about helping others through your book? 
Uh, yeah, uh, quite a bit. Um, you know, like I had the podcast and I, I do that and I bring on uh, uh, people that own businesses and also professionals. And, um, you know, I, through my career of 50 years, one thing I've always noticed is that um, a lot of people are in business, but they don't study business. Um, they make the wedget really well. And, um, you know, they do, they make stuff really good, but they don't know how to run a business. And consequently, they, they really have a tough time growing their business. And I felt in this book, the thing I always wanted to get, get through to them is that you have two dimensions of a business owner. You need to, you need to respect people that are on your team. I like the team approach. You might've read that. I'm a big believer of bringing in all the people, get rid of your egos at the door and let's help this person run the business and not worry about how we're going to get paid or not get paid or who's the leader. So this is all about giving to the business owner, but what the book, the book has done is it's allowed people on their, in their own way and on their own terms to read something without any noise and come up with the idea that, you know what, this guy makes some sense and I'm struggling and I don't want to struggle. I deserve a good business and personal life and I'm putting the effort in. So I'm hoping, and I, and I've seen it now that the book is really saying, I'm showing you how to do it. I'll show you how to find time. I'll show you how, look at it. I ran a multi-million dollar planning practice and for 40 of my 50 years, I only worked 80 days a year. So I did something right, I guess. I don't know, you know, but it's in the book. <laughs> it's, in, it's in the book. And so for those of you who listen to this show, because you are authors and whether it's fiction or nonfiction, it doesn't matter to me. The whole purpose of why I run my business, the reason why Tom run his business is, yes, we're all about making money. If you're not making money, you're not in business. But at the same time is, why do we want to make money? We want to make money so that we can go on creating, whether it's the next book, the next program, in Tom's case, the next podcast, because as much as uh, people don't like to talk about it, there is a cost to running a podcast program. There are things that have to be done and people have to uh, be employed to assist you with that. So for, for no other reason, really take your authorship seriously and start looking at it as a business, even if you name the business after yourself, such as Tom Perone LLC, you know, just because it is a business. And when you start treating it that way, then people like Tom can really assist you to build it up to a point where you too can work 80 days a year. I mean, that sounds really good to me. I don't know about anybody else. <laughs> Anything else you want to share? Yeah, no, I, I think that's about it. And uh, the, the, uh, the, the exposure you give to people like us is amazing. And I think it's great because, uh, you know, we don't get a chance to talk to so many people about this. And, and you know, the, the way you do it, Janine, too, is that I'm able to give, throw out my Italian passion of how I feel about, because, uh, you know, I do love people and I want them to always succeed. And if they didn't know me and they didn't hear me, they wouldn't realize how important it is for me that people are uh, are helping them and they get and life is better. You know, life is always good. So, um, you know, I thank you for making this available to the public and, of course, all your good courses. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Would you uh, let people know the name of your podcast so they can look you up? Yes, it's on all the platforms and it's called Building and Protecting Your Business Worth. And it's about small business. We bring on business owners to talk about what they're doing in strategies that's helped them and what not to do. And we bring in professionals that help give us hints on what we, we do and what should, should you do. And I also have a blog called uh, yourbusinessworth.com that has a lot of white papers and blog posts on there about business and uh, certainly visit it and um, and Jeannie they could reach me at t perone at n-e-c-g-g-i-n-c dot com 
if they have any questions. And uh, that's pretty much it. So thank you very much for your time today, Tom. And this is Janine Bolin with the Writer's Hour, Creative Conversations. And with today's guest and the tips that Tom has to offer, I highly recommend that you not only start following him on the podcasting uh, software or app of your choice, but you also buy his book because for people like myself who are in uh, finances for a very long time, it's solid information and it's not going to lead you astray. So have a great day and don't forget to keep reaching for the stars. Thank you for listening to the Writer's Hour. To hear more about the creative conversations that Janine Bolin is sharing with her listeners, please visit janinebolin.com forward slash guest. Guest.